Hi everyone, this is Swati from softwaretestinghelp.com team and today in this segment we'll talk about database testing. This is a quick introduction from a QA, pointers, uh, QA tester's point of view. Now what exactly is database testing is what we will start our discussion with. So to begin with, you know, um, what database testing involves, it's important to understand what exactly is a database. Now most applications these days are three-tiered in nature, which means they have a client, uh, which is usually the user interface. So this could be a Windows or a web-based system, or it could also be a mobile-based system. So it could be like, you know, any kind of interface that helps the user interact with it. And there is a middle service layer, which acts as, you know, a kind of, um, it's, you know, for the, for the lack of a better word, it's actually a service that serves as an interface between the client and the database. And database is actually the physical entity where all your data is stored. So it's actually a physical system where um, all of your data that you create or manipulate from the front end finds its way into. So when new data is created from the front end, it goes and finds its place in the database. And when a particular data is looked up for in the client, that is picked up from the database and the service layer is what enables it. Now, the next thing that we will move on to is do we always have to test the database? Now, this is something that um, kind of like is in all of our testers' mind. Now, I work with um, beginners a lot. I, I work with testers a lot, so a lot of times, new testers, especially testers who are uh, new to the QA field or testers who do not have priority experience, tend to think that when you test an application from the G GUI UI interface alone as part of functional testing, this is not end-to-end -end testing. This, the reason why testers, some testers feel this way is because until and unless you validate the database, they do not think that it is end-to-end -end testing, which I don't think is always correct. So here is an example. Let's say I'm creating an account on a site such as Amazon or Google or anywhere where there is user registration available. So when I'm creating an account, let's say I'm giving a few details, name, you know, date of birth, probably address, uh, telephone number, etc. Now when I create this information, this new you know, registrant record gets created in the database. Now, if I have to validate whether this has happened correctly or not, one way to do about it is going and looking in the database. There is no doubt about it. But there are other ways to test whether a certain data has made into the database or not, and that does not involve the database. And that is, from the UI, you can create an account, and then you can retrieve that account information. Say you want to edit that account information or re-log in. So this will essentially retrieve all the information from the database. So you can, from the front end itself, validate whether the data has made it into the database correctly or not. So what I'm trying to tell you is not all QA projects, not all testing projects have to absolutely look into the database. And it does not mean that the testing has not been complete or hasn't been end-to-end -end unless you look at the database. So the, that is a kind of misconception I want to first um, you know, address before we go any further on the database. Now, in that case, when do we really have to test a database? Now, sometimes these requests requests come explicitly from the clients. The clients want you to test the database uh, for all, you know, making sure that it is working fine. Sometimes it could be the nature of the test. So database testing does not normally have to be part of your functional testing profile, but sometimes it might be. So in all of those circumstances that I mentioned, if we have to absolutely test the database, there are four important things that we test. One is data mapping. So when I say data mapping, here is what I mean. Let's look at it with the help of an example. Um, so let's say, again, let's say I have created an account. So whatever I do from the front end, so when I create an account, let's say I'm editing an account, I'm probably deleting my account, um, I'm probably just, you know, viewing my account details. So whatever I'm trying to do on the front end pertaining to a particular account related information at the back end, so no, from the database side, it should invoke one of the CRUD operations. So create, update, 
delete and retrieve. So data mapping is exactly checking, performing a particular operation on the front end and checking if the respective operation, I mean uh, respective CRUD operation has been invoked on the back end and if the results have been consistent. So that is as simple, I mean that is very, very simple. That's one of the very basic tests that we perform. The next level of testing that you would want to perform on the database is ACID properties. So ACID stands for atomicity, consistency, isolation and durability as you've seen on my screen. So atomicity is nothing but let's say I perform a transaction. Let's say I'm creating an account. So create account process has to have either a success or it should be a failure when I don't provide the correct kind of information. So there has to be either a success or a failure state, nothing in between. So that's what atomicity means. Either it is positive, negative, nothing in between. Consistency say, means that only valid data gets saved. Again, you know, as I was telling you, when I create an account, if I just give a date of birth that's completely in the wrong format, it should not work. Then isolation. Isolation is when I'm performing multiple transactions. Let's say, you know, two people are use, accessing the same account and one is deleting it, one is editing it. Then, you know, there should not be any conflict. Again, this is probably the example that will not happen in real time. But let's say you're performing a few activities, you know, in parallel. They should still behave in a way that they are being performed one after the other. So the database should be able to find the correct order and process them accordingly. Then coming to durability, any data that you take from the you know, user and save it, there should not be any loss of it. So all databases have to satisfy the asset properties. Next comes data integrity. Now this is actually something very simple for us to understand. Let's say my date of birth is a certain date. Now whichever page of the site I access and wherever the date of birth is being displayed, it should display the same date of birth consistently throughout all the pages. Finally, business conformity. Now, whatever part of the application you're looking at, whether it is the service layer, database, the user interface itself, or anything else for that matter, all of them are built to serve the business. So you really can't, uh, you know, aim to get to a technically composite, complex, and, you know, complicated system just because, you know, for the thrill of it. We, we cannot really do that. Whatever we build has to conform to the business. So if there is a particular business rule that you have to validate, you will have to get to your database and do that. So these are the four, uh, you know, main things that you would test. So um, now how would you do it? How do you actually test it? Now for one, we understand what is database, what is, you know, why do we do it? And um, what kind of things do we check? We understand all of that. So the next part is how do we do it? Now, as I said, a database is a physical structure that does not have a user interface. Now, the best way, to, I mean, the only way I would say to talk to a database is through what we call a structured query language. So structured query language, as the name indicate, is a way of querying, is a way of us constantly interacting with the database in terms of questions or commands to retrieve the appropriate results so we get to see what exactly is happening in the database. So usually structured query language, SQL has many dialects, but most of the time, um, I mean, all of the times it has um, the most predominantly used part of SQL is select statements. There are many kinds of select statements. You can join a couple, couple of tables. You can, um, you can order the results that you see. All of that is possible, but select statements in various flavors of it is one of the most important uh, way in which you would gain an insight into how the database is structured. Then you also have other uh, commands like uh, data definition language that handle things at a table level. So you can create, alter, rename, drop, truncate tables or indexes. You could also use the data manipulation language to insert, update and delete records. There's also the control language where you can grant and revoke accesses. Uh, but SQL is something that is most commonly used by testers. Now the common things that you would, other components that you would test are triggers. So triggers are simply when a certain event happens, a certain trigger happens and a certain, you know, record gets inserted, updated. So certain kind of activity happens on the database. So how do you validate a trigger? So the way uh, triggers are generally validated is you actually perform that activity whichever will trigger the operation. 
then run a respective select statement and see if the results are consistent. Stored procedures are basically, you know, programs that get executed when a certain event happens again. So same thing, you would run a stored procedure, you would see what queries are getting executed, you would, you know, uh, again run SQL queries to see things are um, consistent or not. You would validate for the schema of the database to be correct and also for the transactions to be correct. So whatever different components you are testing, SQL plays a major role. So for beginners or, you know, database testing aspirants, uh, SGH highly recommends that you learn SQL, you gain an expertise in, um, you know, uh, writing different ways of select statements and also STH believes in fundamentals. So please make sure your database fundamentals are strong, that you understand what each of these components are, um, that you understand, you know, what data map mapping exactly is all about, the asset properties, and then you can definitely pursue database testing further. Uh, to add to that, we also have like many tutorials online. W3 Schools is a good one. There are many, many other tutorials. You can try one of those. Uh, and you can also try to run the SQL queries online uh, without actually having to, you know, uh, install any software. So you can just, you know, do a Google search on run SQL queries online. There are multiple sites available that will help you do that. So gaining all that practice can be very, very uh, important and instrumental for a successful database testing career. Uh, we also have various content on our softwaretestinghelp.com site where you can look into, um, you know, many database testing concepts and, you know, um, content. So please visit our website or if you have any comments or questions, please post them to this video and we will address them. As always, we hope this session was helpful. We hope to hear from you. Thank you very much.